Team 5156, I'm back with video number two on the inertial sensor. In this one, I hope to show you how to configure it in code and calibrate it with code. But before I do that, I want to go to Chrome and show you if you want to do some extra reading on your own about the inertial sensor from VEX. Um, type in kb.com, I mean, kb.vex.com. And mine comes up, and this is just a whole bunch of VEX knowledge base articles. So the first one that um, in the search engine comes up is VEX library. That's what I'm going to click on. And look at this. All this information on all the different products that VEX offers. We want the VEX V5 grades 9 plus world world STEM competitions. Click on that one. And you have tabs across the top for all different stuff about different VEX components, V5 components. We're going to go to the electronics. Go to electronics. You can learn about the brain, um, robot battery controller, radio, motor, V5 sensors. That's what I want. And let's see. I'm scrolling down. And look, there's the inertial sensor. Click on that one. And you can get a description, all kinds of information. If you want to read more here, go a little more in depth, um, a little, just a little bit more in depth. And there you go. That's where you can find some information. All right, let's go back to code. All right, so first thing when you have a device, you plug it into the V5 brain, it must be configured. So I'm going to go over to my robot configure file right there. And I already did it just because it would just save a little time. But notice... That's how you configure it, right there. You type in the word, the reserved word, inertial. Then you have to name it. This, you gotta make an object, instantiate it. And I called mine inertial 13 because I'm so original, because it's plugged into port 13. All right, so name it, then parentheses, and then put in the inside the parentheses the port it is plugged into. And of course, then end it with a semicolon. So. That has set up the inertial sensor in the robot config.cpp file. For the whole compiling process and linking different files, you need to also go up to the robot config.h or header file, and you need to put in an abbreviated version of the inertial sensor. So the first thing you do is you put the word extern, the reserved word, then you do the inertial again, and then simply write what you called your inertial sensor. Mine's called inertial 13. You don't need to put the port number here. This is just a shortened form of it. All right, once you've got that done, then hit build, make sure it builds. Every time I configure a new device, I make sure I have no discrepancies in how I type things in. All right, so I already done that. Mine's already configured. Let's go to the main CPP, our main code file where all our source code is. And I'm in a, comp in a competition template. This is where you want to do this, get in the habit of programming in here. Um, this is one of the devices that you want to calibrate, have calibrated during the prioton. So what happens, I'm going to go down to the int main, because this is what the program first looks at. It calls a callback function called autonomous and user control. But these only operate based on the position of the switch. We have a manual switch in, in our rooms. And notice that we have a disable and enable. It can either... I can, I both have both autonomous and driver control disabled right now, but I can switch this to enable. Only one can be enabled at a time, autonomous, autonomous or driver. Um, when you're at the actual tournament, when you're up there for a match, your robot will be plugged in to a field control system. Instead of this manual switch, it'll be a computer switch. There'll be somebody um, with the, um, you know, a graphical interface, and they'll just be switching everybody's robots on and off with basically a, a, a digital switch. But what this does, when that switch has both um, driver and autonomous disabled, neither one of these callback functions will run. But 
go just one step down to the next piece of code, Prioton. Prioton will be running. So that's why when you go and you plug in your robot at the beginning of, the, of your match, and you turn on your code, you wanna make sure your robot is in the position for calibration. Because if you turn your robot and reposition it after you've started running your code and it's done the calibration, it's not gonna run properly. So remember, set up your robot in its proper position, then turn on your code to do the calibration in Prioton. So here's my Prioton right here. I'm gonna highlight all this. This is where you're gonna put your calibration for the uh, inertial sensor in between the curly braces. And it's gonna go below the VEX code um, initialization um, function right here on line 28 for me. All right, so there is a simple little command. I got my mouse, it's messed up. Here we go, my cursor, I mean. There we go. Um, if you type in, again, the name of your device, mine's inertial 13, and there it is. And I do calibrate, look at that. That'll calibrate it. And it takes about two seconds to calibrate this thing. And if you are trying to test your code and using this switch right here, and you don't wait long enough for it to calibrate, your robot's gonna go in weird directions because it's not fully calibrated. So I like to make a little more elaborate calibration code. I mean, I have to use this, but I make a separate function called um, calibrate inertial sensor. A little longer in name, but I'm going to show you what I do because um, I give I I put feedback onto the joystick here. I put this last line. I put some indicator to the driver to the whoever's using the joystick that it's done calibrating. Um, so let me show you how I do that. I'm going to go ahead and take out this inertial dot calibrate, and I'm going to make I'm going to name my own function. I'm going to call it. Um, calibrate, spell it right, calibrate inertial sensor. And put parentheses at the end and then put a semicolon. And of course, it's all red, doesn't like it because I haven't defined this function. So I'm going to go ahead and define it. When I'm going to make a new function, the function has to be defined before it ever appears in the code. So I'm going to uh, it's first appearing on line 31. I better make sure it is well above line 31. Um, and it also needs to be outside of the Prioton function right here, or task, right? It needs to be outside all of this. So I'm going to go up to line, say, 25 and start typing in. All right. This function I'm creating, all functions need to have a return type. What type of return is it? There's, is it returning an integer? Is it returning a Boolean? Or is it returning nothing? Mine's going to return nothing, so I'm going to call it void. Void. I'm going to type it the same way I did down there. Calibrate. Oh, no. Yes. Calibrate. Ooh, it already popped up. I'm going to hit tab. Hit tab. Calibrate inertial sensor. Put, again, my parentheses. Then, instead of putting a semicolon, since I'm going to be defining the code that makes this function, I need to put in open and close curly braces. And now, between those curly braces, I'm going to put the code. All right. The first thing, of course, I need to do is actually calibrate the sensor. So, that um, call my inertial sensor again. That inertial 13 that I configured. And then calibrate. That's the code that's actually VEX is giving us to calibrate that sensor. But I want to add some more information. I want to say, hmm, if, okay, if the inertial sensor is calibrating, I want to print some, I want to print calibrating to the joystick. So I just use an if statement. If, okay. Inertial sensor is calibrating. Let's see what I have in terms of commands. Let's type in inertial 13. I'm going to put a dot and oh, 
look what popped up. I have is calibrating. Basically, it's a question. Is calibrating? Well, that didn't fill in the way I wanted to. <laughs> Hang on. Is calibrating. There we go. Is calibrating. That's going to return a true or a false. So if inertial is calibrating is true, I want to do one thing. So I, I have to close up the parentheses because that's the condition inside that if statement. Now, what's the code to go with that if statement? I put curly braces to put the code in there. So if the inertial is calibrating, then uh, let's see, I want to print something to the joystick screen. Um, so I need to call the joystick. Since I just mentioned that word, oh, how did I, did I even configure a joystick? Did I? No, well, let's just do that real quick. Okay, controller. Controller. I'm going to call mine joystick. And put my semicolon. I need to go put that into the header file. All right, and extern. I'm going to call this control. It's a controller I'm setting up. And then I'm going to type in joystick. And voila. And like I said, I like to do a... Um, download after I've configured something to make sure, well, I'm, I'm okay with everything. I uh, didn't introduce any mistakes. Did I download? I didn't see any download. Oh, it may not be downloading because I probably mistakes my code over here. Oh, yeah, look at that. I just typed in joystick. Let's just continue on. All right, so joystick. Is it going to come up now? Joystick. Yes, joystick. Um, dot screen. Let's do screen. Screen comes up. And what do I want to do on that screen? I need to, ooh, I got my dot there, and I got some choices here. I want to clear lot, I know this stuff because I've done it a couple times. So there's actually like three lines, one, two, three, you can print things on. I'm going to clear this bottom line, line three. Um, so I'm going to use that second command called clear line. And inside that parentheses, I'm actually going to put line three, and then put my semicolon at the end. So I've cleared the line. Now I want to print something. So let's do joystick dot screen. And let's see if we can find a print. Oh, look, print. I should also mention when you clear that line three, it also puts the cursor there. So all I have to do is say print. Where's the print? Print, print, print. And all that stuff that's highlighted right now, if I just need to get rid of that and put quotation marks. And now I've typed in the quotation marks. I can print something. I can, let's say, I want to say calibrating, calibrating. And then I close it with a semicolon. So there we go. I've got clear the line through the joystick. Then I have print on that line calibrating. That's if the inertial is actually still calibrating. All right. And then, what's the op? You know, what's the other condition? If it's not calibrating, um, if it's if it's not calibrating, then it must be done. So my else statement is going to be. Um, you know, this is the false, the false part. If the inertial sensor is calibrating, it's going to print this. Otherwise, it's going to come down here and do this else which is where um, it's done calibrating. So again, I'm going to print the joystick uh, screen. I'm going to do that clear line. If I don't clear the line, it'll you'll get some overwriting. It'll look really funny. Um, go ahead, try it. Um, but I'm going to clear that line three again so I can print something new. And it's going to say joystick dot screen. And I'll, I'm going to do print. And this time, I'm going to print um, done. And close that with a semicolon. And you know what? I don't, just for fun, I'm going to add in a rumble. So I know. I'll use that haptic engine to make it give me another indicator that it is done calibrating. So, um, Rumble. Where's Rumble? There it goes. Rumble? Rumble? Oh, where is it? Oh, why am I typing in screen? Silly me. Just type in Rumble. There we go. Rumble. 
and you can you need to use start with um quotation marks and you can uh, there's several ways to do it i simply like the short way um hit you do dot 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 that'll give you short three short rumbles or you can do three you know you can do a long rumble you can do a dash i don't know is it a dash or under i think it's a dash anyways i usually do dot 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 um you can try dashes it'll give you a longer rumble all right so I think I have my code. I've got calibrate the inertial sensor. Um, the first thing is to actually do the actual calibration. And then this is the extra stuff that'll let me know that is if it is done calibrating. Um, so did I call this function? Well, I, that's why I usually type it in first. I did call the function right there in my Priya time. Um, Let's cross our fingers and hope this works. All right, so I'm going to hit the download button and see what happens. Woohoo, good sign. Okay, downloading. Okay, so that's done. So let's watch what happens. Um, let's watch on here. I got to show you two things. You got to watch two things. Let me get that. There we go. We'll drape it around there. All right. So I got to be able to switch this course. So everything needs to be in the disabled, and I got to have this in the autonomous. Well, no, I don't have to neither. Um, I don't have any autonomous code. We're going to just see this happen because this is all taking place in our preatom. So let me go ahead and hit run, and let's see what happens. Calibrating, calibrating, calibrating. Calibrating, calibrating. Oh, I did something wrong. What did I forget? Anybody figure that out yet? Um, could it be the way I have this thing set up? Oh, hang on. I got to let me stop this and let me put my sensor in a good location. Let me try this again. I might have to stop this recording. We'll see. Run. Calibrating, calibrating, calibrating. All right, let me pause this. <laughs> 